What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor back with another video in the tutorial series and in this one we're going to be talking about advanced roundabouts. So advanced roundabouts follows on from our video about basic roundabouts. If you haven't seen that, click here and watch that first and come back to this one. So once you've done basic roundabouts, you understand how to signal for a roundabout, you understand how to and when to enter a roundabout, where to give way to and where you should position yourself on a roundabout. For this video, we're going to talk more about lanes, positioning and how to enter a busy roundabout. So let's start with how to enter a busy roundabout. So when to go at a big busy roundabout when you've got a constant stream of traffic coming from your right can be a little bit difficult and a little bit daunting, which is why it takes a lot of practice. So make sure you go over this with your driving instructor, friends, family, whoever you're learning to drive with before you take your driving test. Practice it a lot. So the first thing that you're looking for when you've got a big stream of traffic coming from your right is a car coming from around the roundabout. What that will do is it will block off the cars from your right and give you a small window of opportunity to enter the roundabout. The next thing that you're looking for to give you an opportunity to go is where the car is that's coming around the roundabout towards you. If they're on the outside, they might be leaving at your junction. They also might be coming around to the next junction so we can't go just on that information the next thing that we're looking for is if we've got a car on the inside where are they going next you might think that you could join the roundabout at the same time as them but what if they're leaving at the exit after you they're going to cross your path and you're going to have a problem so if there's a car on the inside we can't join the roundabout at the same time as them if you do have a car on the outside of the roundabout the next thing that we need to look at is the position of their wheels and their body language the body language of the car if the wheels are pointing away from you it's very likely that they're leaving at your exit if the wheels are pointing towards you it's very likely that they're coming around the roundabout this skill takes a long time to master because you've literally got to make a really split second quick decision the next thing that's really important at big busy roundabouts are the lanes and the lane markings as we use the roundabouts today i'm going to be pointing out the lanes and the lane markings some of the roundabouts don't have multiple lanes some of the roundabouts are just really busy but the roundabouts that do have lanes are multiple lanes and lanes as you go around the roundabout they are overwhelming at first but replay this video keep practicing on them and you'll have have roundabouts mastered in no time. So let's get on with it. Let's go and show you guys some roundabouts. I'm in Morden today. Morden has a ridiculous amount of roundabouts. If you've been here, if you've taken your driving test here, or if you're learning to drive here, you know how many roundabouts there are here, especially Rose Hill roundabout. Woo! I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna make it look easy and hopefully give you guys some good tips. Let's go. Right, so here's the first roundabout. We are going to be turning right using the second exit. It's important to remember not to assume that the exit number indicates the direction. So there are only two exits on this roundabout. One turns left and one turns right. I've checked my mirrors, indicated and moved into the right nice and early. And I'm gonna use the second lane to take the second exit. Looking to the right and I can see already a car approaching on the inside of the roundabout, so I know that they're coming towards me. The other car was on the outside and indicating left, so I left straight away. Make sure you do that left mirror check before you exit the roundabout. Let's go back and do that again. So approaching the next roundabout, I'm in a little bit of traffic, so I'm gonna be patient. Not gonna try and get too close to the vehicle in front going to keep my safe spacings and safe distances remember i can't stop on pedestrian crossings i'm turning left first exit because it's the first exit i can signal straight away i'm looking to the right you guys can see that as well is there a car approaching from the right yes where are they going i just saw their body language move to the left also their wheels were pointing away from me so i could take that one and go straight away without stopping so at the end of this road, there's another roundabout. I will be turning right using the second exit. I've already moved across because I can see parked cars on my left. So I'm in the perfect lane to take a right turn out of this roundabout. I'm checking my mirror, signal, position is already set. Speed, I'm gonna approach this roundabout nice and slowly. If this is the first time you've done or the first few times that you've done big busy roundabouts, approach it really slowly. 
make sure you keep checking. If you're not sure about whether it's safe to go or not, you'd rather stop than enter a roundabout when there's a car coming from your right. So let's start to look to the right. Even though it's not my turn yet, there's two cars in front. I'm gonna start looking to the right so I can see and start to recognize the pattern of this roundabout. I can see there's a car blocking off the cars from the right and which way is the wheel pointing? On that moped, you can really see the wheel and it was pointing straight ahead at the roundabout away from me. Keep looking at the cars coming around the roundabout and you can see where their wheels are pointing away and there, ooh, that one was coming around. Interesting, that's why that car in front got it wrong. Let's have a look at the next car coming around the roundabout, should be in a second. And you can see from the taxi's body language, he wasn't coming around towards us and his wheels were pointing away from us as well. Where's the bus's wheels pointing? At the exit. Let's have another look at that. So that wheel is pointing away from me, so I'm going to set off there. You don't need a massive gap. Checking my left mirror, indicating left, and I'm always aiming for the left lane on the exit of a roundabout, especially on your driving test. You don't want to be aiming for the right lane, then some idiot behind you zooming around the road undertakes you. That's going to cause a problem. Always left lane on the exit. All right, so let's have a go at another one of Morden's famous roundabouts. This one, I'm going straight ahead towards Rose Hill using the second exit. Because it's straight ahead, I know I need to stick to my left. I'm not going to use the right lane to go straight ahead. That would be incorrect. Do I need to signal to take the second exit? No, I'm not going to signal until I pass the first exit. So we're lining up in the correct lane. There's a little bit of traffic, so we're going to be patient. This is gold. If you get this on your driving test, it gives you more time to think. Don't sit here and just fall asleep. Don't sit here and think, woo, wow, I'm on a drive. Stay focused. There's a roundabout coming up. Start planning what's happening. Start looking to the right so that you can see the pattern of the roundabout. There's some bank of cars. There's a bank of cars up ahead just setting off because there's a green light. Let's start looking to the right. Can we go? There's no cars at all. So I'm going to set off and take that opportunity. You might not get that lucky on your driving test, so make sure you're looking at the wheels and looking at the body language of the cars. Okay, on this next roundabout, I'm going to be taking a right turn. Notice on the information board, there's a junction straight ahead of us that's got a no entry sign on it. What that means is that doesn't count as an exit, it's only an entrance. So if we're talking about this roundabout, we count one, two, miss that no entry sign, and that is the third exit on our right. Also, we've got traffic lights on this roundabout. What that means for you is, remember on junctions, if your light is green, traffic from the left and right will be held. That works the same on roundabouts. So as soon as your light turns green, that stream of traffic on the right of me is going to be stopped. When you set off, don't be hesitant, especially if there's a car coming, because that's going to get marked down on your test. It's also going to confuse the car behind. When they see a green light, they're going to expect you to set off. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm indicating right, hugging the inside. There's my first exit. There's the second exit. I'm not taking this roundabout too quickly. I need my steering to be in control. I've indicated left. I'm still checking my left mirror, making sure that there's no hazards on my left and I'll exit that roundabout. That wasn't too hard if we don't go too fast. The real big temptation is to go as fast as everybody else. You see other cars zooming around the roundabout and you want to go at that speed as well. Take it slowly, you're practicing. Don't worry about holding up the cars behind. How much are you really realistically gonna delay their journey? Five, 10 seconds? Take the roundabout at a decent speed so that your steering isn't out of control and you'll look so much neater and your passenger or examiner will feel so much safer as well. Now we're on approach to the notorious Rose Hill roundabout. For this one, we are going to go straight ahead using the third exit. Remember, it's important to note that the direction doesn't always mean the exit number. Straight ahead could be the second, third, or fourth exit even. So we can see on the information board, the third exit straight ahead is towards Mitcham. That might be useful because it might be written on the floor. Mitcham. So we'll just follow that lane and it will take us exactly where we need to be. This is a roundabout with multiple lanes as you go around the roundabout, sometimes called a spiral roundabout because once you're in your lane, it spirals outwards to take you to the exit that you need to be on. So once you're on the roundabout, it would be inappropriate to switch lanes. So the best way to do this is to think of it like tram tracks. The tram on the tram tracks can't veer away from or cross any of the tram tracks. You have to stay solid within your tram track. So as soon as we get onto the roundabout, we'll be in a lane and it will be inappropriate to veer away from our tracks. 
Okay, again, so this is a roundabout with a traffic light system as we enter the roundabout, so it would be inappropriate to check right and make sure that there's nothing approaching us. We're just gonna continue in our lane. First exit. Second exit straight ahead. I'm aiming for the third exit and I'm just following the lane, not veering away from my tram tracks, not moving across and crossing any of the lanes, I'm just following the line and it's gonna take us exactly where we need to be. If you start in the right place, on a spiral roundabout, you'll finish in the right place. Lights have turned green, I'm signaling left to show I'm leaving at the next exit. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Now I'm on the dual carriageway on approach to Rose Hill roundabout again. This time I'm taking quite a popular exit that they use on the driving test. I'm going to, on the sign, head towards the M25 or Rygate. Now if I'm looking at the sign, that's one, two, three, four, the fourth exit on the right. So I'm gonna check my mirrors and move across nice and early so that no one else can take this position off me and make it difficult to move later on. The lights are green at the moment, so I'm not worried about traffic coming from the right, but I am thinking about the lights changing before we get there, which they haven't, and I'm following the tram tracks. Notice as I get to this point, the lanes are moving further away from the middle, so it's taken me into the second lane from inside. Spiral roundabout, it's not gonna stay close to the inside, it's gonna spiral me outwards as I get closer to the exit. So. Let's carry on and see the tram tracks spiraling me outwards again. Once you've got the hang of the spiral system, this roundabout doesn't need to be difficult. It's got traffic lights to tell you when to enter and when to go. We're following the tram tracks. It's taking us further to the outside. All we're doing is not moving away from the tracks. We're not moving away from the lanes and we're not crossing any of the lanes and it takes you exactly where you need to go. If you're doing a driving test at Morden, make sure you watch this bit a couple of times so that you can make sure that you're doing Rose Hill Roundabout correctly as well. Let's pull up on the left. Keeping my signal on when my steering is adjusted. Great, handbrake neutral, cancel the signal. Guys, that was advanced roundabouts. Hope you guys find that useful. Watch this video a couple of times, especially if you're having trouble with roundabouts. If there's anything else that I can help you guys with, comment below. Follow me on Instagram at Francis the Instructor. Follow at Get Licensed Driving School, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.